my daughter, I was telling Brother Mike, some young man came up to me and said, hey, Mom, she said, wait a minute. My mom had one daughter, and I got two and a half brothers. Because her and Sean fight too much for him to be a whole one. And so, you know, so I got these, and to have two of them with me this morning, it, 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 my heart is overwhelmed. Amen. And, uh, to have a son trust you with his son, that's something for someone to trust you with their anointing. Right. Right. And for right. that, I am humbled and grateful. Amen. And then for a young man to, that his pastor would release him to be with a woman he's only met once. Amen. And a Amen. female pastor at that. Okay. Y'all don't know how humbled I am. Yes, right. As a native from the great city of Detroit, Mike Sears was born and raised on the east side and signed his first recording contract at the age of 15. Delante, there's still hope. Mm -hmm. Since that time, Sears has been in the entertainment industry, performing as a rap artist, doing some signing, singing, sorry, doing some singing and some acting work. His genuine love for the arts has also afforded him the opportunity to work in several stage and film productions with several upcoming projects in the works. His most notable work uh, has come through the stage play called Boss Lady that was released on DVD nationwide at Walmart and various other retail and online outlets. Also, his work with another stage production entitled Beat the Streets is beginning to gain regional and national attention as well. As an artist, he is currently in a singing group called Antidote in Audio, he, who currently has a single playing around the country entitled Love Song Written for Me. Sears is also has a Christian rap artist with a solo project in the works. Sears is also, okay, I'm not gonna move. Beyond the stage, Sears has worked extensively behind the scene doing some promoting, marketing, sales, managing, A&R, and artist product development, concert promotions, and event coordinating, giving him over 25 years of experience. Sears has been instrumental in such events as the International Gospel Music Hall of Fame Amen. and Museum Induction Ceremony. Amen. The Dr. Dorinda Clark Cole Singers Musicians and Artists National Amen. Conference, as well as doing stints with du Duron Records, Detroit's Talented Extravaganza, and Universal Music and Video Group. Amen. He don't do nothing. <laughs> On the education side, well, thank you. Sears has earned an undergraduate degree in music industry management from Ferris State University and also obtained his master's degree from Full Sail University in entertainment business. He has several certificates as an associate recording engineer, one for small business management, another for visual merchandising. Sears says, I hope to reach young people, the young at heart, and all those who like to keep it real and deal with their issues holistically, says Sears. I see using entertainment as a bridge to reach the youth and the elders, gospel and secular, and stretch across racial, economic, cultural, and religious divides. Amen. At a place where he calls home, Minister Sears has served for many years as a member of Perfecting Church under the leadership of Bishop Marvin L. Wyman. There he works on the drama department in audio and is currently being elevated in the school of ministry as a novice minister. Sears' ultimate mission and goal is as he states, to reach the people. Bishop Wyman has always taught me that ministry means people. So I hope that I'll be able to represent Christ well as I'm given the opportunity to serve his people through various forms of ministry. Amen. As you stand to your feet and help me by saying, anointing, fall fresh on me. Amen. Stretch your hands this way for the anointing to fall fresh yes. on Minister Mike Sears. Thank you, God. 
a hand clap. Right. You know, you know, talk about the Lord of Lord. The King of Kings. Hallelujah. He's so worthy to be praised. Please take your seats. I pray that I won't be before you any longer than the Lord would have me to be. All right. I only want him to be in our way, so I want to get out of the way yeah. and move straight to the assignment. I thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. Um, already the, the service has been saturated. Um, the prayer, the praise and worship, the people of God, um, Pastor Theta already exhorting. I really can just give the, uh, the benediction and we could, we could leave from here. But I do believe even as God has saturated place. Um, only thing left to do is just go a little bit higher. Amen. 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 Um, again, thank you for Pastor uh, Theta giving me, extending me this opportunity. Um, looking forward to sharing what God has to say on today. Um, see some familiar faces and some faces that are not so familiar, but um, I'm happy to see everybody. I, I feel at home already. Amen. Amen. It's my first time here. Um, I pray that it won't be my last. Uh, we'll know in a few minutes, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, my main objective is that that you see God and uh, what he wants to do, yeah. um, not just in this particular place, in this particular setting, but what he wants to do in you. Amen. Because amen. I believe God has a word specific for you. Amen. So, amen. Without any further ado, uh, let's open our Bibles, tablets, iPhones, wherever you can get the scriptures. <laughs> Turn with me, please, to the book of Matthew, St. Matthew, verse 14, and I want to begin at the 22nd verse. Again, that's the book of Matthew, chapter 14, beginning at the 22nd verse. If you have it, say amen. amen. If you don't have it, say, give me a minute. We're all there. Amen. 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 <laughs> Appreciate. We can all be on one accord. Don't want right. to rush God. <clears throat> A very familiar to some of you passage of scripture, but I pray that God will deliver it in a way that maybe you have not heard it before. As has already been stated, there's a shift going on in the atmosphere. Yeah, 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 shift yeah. is just a, a, a big word for change. That's yeah. right. And a lot of us need change. That's right. Amen. Sometimes we've been doing the same thing same the same way. Say so. And we're expecting different results. And by definition, that's considered insanity. That's right. And God didn't call us to be insane. He said we're strange, but we're not insane. Right, right, right. And so he wants us to be in our right mind. And he wants us to have a word that will keep us and take us to the very place that he wants us to go. Yeah. Matthew 14, chapter 22, and I'll read and conclude at the 30, I'm sorry, chapter 14, verse 22. And I'll conclude at the 32nd verse, starting at verse 22. And it reads, and straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship. Someone yeah. say constrain. Constrain. And to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitude away. And when he had sent the multitude away, he went up unto the mountain apart to pray. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. Say, the wind was contrary. The wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch yeah. of the night, well, well, well. Jesus went unto them walking Walk. on the sea. Yeah. Say, Jesus was walking on Jesus the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking yeah. Yeah. on the sea, mm -hmm. they were troubled, yeah. saying, it is a spirit or a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But straightway, yeah. Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, 
Lord, if it be thou, bid me to come unto thee on the water. And he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, say the wind was boisterous, the wind was boisterous. he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately, Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, they being Jesus and Peter, the wind ceased. Say with me, the wind ceased. The wind ceased. Please be seated. Amen. I want to take my scripture, or I want to take today's message, if I was to give it a title, I would go back to the 27th verse, where it says, But straightway Jesus spake unto them and said, be of good cheer. Yes. It is I. Be not afraid. Mm -hmm. And again, for a few moments, I just want to use as a title. Faith is not fear. Amen. Tell your neighbor, say, faith Amen. is not fear. Amen. Now, I'm going to give you wow. what they call the, the, the small print, the, the underlining clause. Yeah, yeah. Today's message is about faith. Yeah. I, I want you to understand what I'm getting, what I'm getting at, what God wants to do. He wants to identify and increase your faith. Mm -hmm. But in order to do that, I'm going to have to, as delicately as I can, show you what faith is not. Wow. And today we need to know that faith. It's not fear. So I'm going to take my time and just go through the scripture. It won't be long, but I'll, I'll take enough time so you can understand the, 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 the uniqueness of the scripture and what I believe the intent for the writer writing it, the author of the scripture, and, how, and, 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 and the audience in which he presented it to. Let me pray real quick. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for this day, for this is a day that you have made, and even now, we're rejoicing and we're glad in it. Even though this is a day that we've never seen before, as I speak faith over your people, Lord God, we believe that you're going to have the victory over today. And because you have the victory, Lord, you've given it to us. I decrease even now, Lord God, that you may increase the more. A lot of people to see thee and never be impressed by Anything that I've done or even are yet doing, Lord God, allow you to be visible and yet present in this place and take the people further. Leave them with the word, Lord God, that will guide their steps and allow them to do the very thing that you've called them to do. In this day, we say thank you and amen. amen. I think today is unique. Today happens to be 12, 17, 17. I, I happened to notice that when I was filling out my, my, my uh, offering envelope. I don't know. Maybe you're getting double for your trouble today. Yeah, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know what your 2017 has looked like, but we're literally two weeks out from starting again, yeah. from beginning again. Yeah. The reset button is about to be pushed. Yeah. And that, that, that literally means I get a chance to do over. Yeah. There's nothing like a do over. Not, not, and it doesn't always mean a do over means that what you've already done wasn't okay. Right. But a do-over means I get a fresh start. That's right. Amen. And I get to start it yeah. again. Yeah. I mean, I, can, can you imagine your bank account being filled and then you get a do-over? Yeah. Like, you get a double. So I just believe God is going to, going to do double on today. So, so receive, even though we're talking about faith, in addition to knowing and understanding and getting a better idea of what faith is, you're going to also understand what faith is not. So when the enemy comes up against you like a flood, you'll be able to identify and say, ah, no, that's not God. Yeah. And so I, I, I'm going to give you some artillery, uh, art, artillery to be able to defend yourself against those things. Yeah. So real simple, 
Today I'm going to act somewhat like a lawyer. It's okay if I use I believe God has sent me here today to defend the faith. Yeah. Mm. Far too long wow. we've allowed the enemy to attack us. That's right. And us as people of God, a lot of times we don't do anything. Yeah. Mm. We're supposed to be meek, we're supposed to be humble, mm. but God didn't allow God has given us power. Right. For the scripture simply says, God has not given us the spirit of fear, right. but of power. Of a sound mind. You understand what I'm saying? He hasn't given us a spirit of fear. So for a few moments again, I want to act as a lawyer. And I'm here today to defend faith. Yeah. See, faith is on trial today. Yeah. Faith has yeah. been falsely yeah. accused yeah. as fear. Yeah. And the picture is clearly painted in the scripture. And as we go through it, you'll be able to see it a little bit better. But I'm just giving you my, my opening. So faith is is on trial and you as the jury you as the people you as the witnesses yeah. are going to have to get faith free on today yeah well come on. your faith needs to be free, free. on today yeah. because it's been bound for too long yeah. god says i'm going to do and your faith says i'm not sure right. god says i've already done it and your faith says but it don't look like what you said. God says, but I'm your God. And you say, but but I need to pay these bills. Oh, oh, oh. My point is, faith has been bound for too long. He's been in prison. But today, I believe God sent me here to release faith. So this here chair is going to be a witness stand because as a lawyer, you know, as, as you're, you're pleading your case, and, and I believe... God, Jesus is the ultimate defender. He's the yeah. ultimate advocate. Yeah. And I believe he's going to work through me today. Yeah. You can't visually see him, but you see me. And yeah. just believe that I, I'm being led of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And so, so with well his said. instruction, well I'm going to speak. And you're going to be witnesses. And we're going to release faith in this atmosphere. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So I have a few witnesses that I'm going to be calling to the stand. As well as some exhibits may go forth. And by the end of today's trial, you'll be able to decide whether or not faith should be free or should it continue to be locked up in fear. Amen. Amen. Now let's look at the scriptures. Faith is very different from fear. But do we as believers know the difference? See, ultimately, there are times in our lives when we move out of fear and we label it as an act of faith. Wow. In the Bible, the book of Matthew, which we just read, chapter 14, verse 31, Jesus says these words to Peter. O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? This is the response of Jesus to Peter after he had to stretch forth his hand and catch Peter as he began to sink in the water. Now, in the verses prior to this one, Peter had requested to meet Jesus on the water to prove to him that Jesus was who he said he was after he and the, after he and the other disciples were afraid upon witnessing Jesus walk on water. I'll pause here just for a moment. Now see, when God gives you instructions, a lot of times when you're obedient, when you're doing the very thing that God tells you to do, you'll see him in some ways that you've never seen him before. Right. Because you're operating in obedience. Right. Because you're operating on the right side of right. Yeah. How many times have we been on the, the, the wrong side of right? We know how that looks. <laughs> We can understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not afraid of it. We, right, we've right. seen it. It happens. It's happened so many times. But when we get on the right side of right, so many times we can see God in a way, and it's like, God, is that you? And we become fearful. We become afraid. Yeah. This, is, this is the instance that happened right here in the scripture. Yeah. They see God, Jesus, walking on water. Oh, come on, we haven't heard about anyone anywhere before that time. Nor after that time, walking on water. Ghosts and spirits was something that was, again, 
They've seen it before. So it was natural for them to be in the middle of the sea and see Jesus and mistake him for a ghost. Right. So they, it wasn't something unnatural. Like I said, you know how it is to be on the wrong side of right. Yeah. So when you see it, you identify it as what it is and you deem it as fear. But here it is, this is not something you should be afraid of. This is actually Jesus showing you himself in his godlike nature trying to take you to another level of yeah, your faith. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Well said, well said. Let's continue. Wow. Almost every time I have heard this passage of scripture preach, deference is given to Peter for being brave, for stepping out of the boat, and for walking on water by faith. But then it was just that one time I heard a preacher preach, and it, 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 it hit something in my spirit because of the situation that I was going to that a light clicked, that a revelation, was, a revelation was given, and I want to kind of walk through that here today. See, I believe instead that Peter moved to doubt. That I'm sorry, Peter, that it was fear that moved Peter. Not his faith, but it was fear that moved Peter, and, and it, the, the fear that moved him eventually moved him to doubt. Now, Peter's actions proved his doubt in Jesus' words instead of his face, faith. Yes. So that's what I want to discuss as we go through the Bible, King James Version, Matthew 14, 22 through 32. I would like to closely examine at least three main factors to deal with Peter's lack of faith in Jesus or his doubt that was birthed out of fear. Now, there are three main elements I want to look at in this passage of Scripture. Those elements are the word, say the word, the word, the water, the water. or the way, yes. and the wind. Yes. Each element, now, if you didn't know, I'm, this is my, my opening arguments, so my, my opening statement. So I'm, I'm preparing the way so as you continue, as we continue to go through this, you can see where I'm going. Yeah. So say that with me again. The word, the, word, the, water, the water, or the way. Or the way. And the, wind. and the wind. Each element will help us to better understand the meaning of this passage of scripture and it will begin, so what I want to do is begin by talking about the word and the water simultaneously as yeah, they both yeah. work together to accomplish the will of God. Later on, not much later on, but later on I will talk about the wind as it worked opposite excuse me, of the word and the will of God. But first let's deal with what Jesus said, yeah. or the word, and the way, or the route his word had to take in order for it to be accomplished. Yeah. Right. Typically, again, like I said before, most times we look at one part of this scripture. Peter got out the boat, he walked on water, and then he got distracted by the wind, and so that's what caused him to sink. He cried out, Jesus reached up, saved him, they got back in the boat, and they ended up where they were supposed to be. We look at that one part, but there's some other things, right. some evidence that I want to pull out yeah. to prove my point that faith has been locked up through this scripture. Right. And we've really watched fear be exhibited right. because what Peter did is he walked out of his fear. He began to doubt Jesus, and that's what led him to sin. In the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 17, it says this. So then, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Therefore, we can conclude that faith comes by what? Hearing. The, what Jesus has to say. So the question has to be asked, what did Jesus say throughout this passage of scripture? From Matthew 14, 22 through 32. All right. There are a few things that Jesus says that I would like to point out. The first thing that Jesus spoke to his disciples was a set of instructions. Yeah. He told them to get into a ship, yeah. go before him, yeah. and meet him on the other side. That's right. This happens in verse 22 right. of this passage. Yeah. The second time we hear Jesus speak, he speaks to all the disciples again because of their fear in verse 27. Right. They were afraid because they witnessed Jesus walking on water. They supposed he was a ghost. He says to them, this is the second time he speaks. Be of good cheer. It is I. Yeah. Be not afraid. Uh -huh. The next time we hear Jesus speak, 
He's only speaking to Peter now. Peter, so right. the attention changes from him speaking to all of the disciples, right. and he's speaking to just Peter. Yeah. But why? Here's why. The next time we hear Jesus speak, he's only speaking to Peter, and he says one word. Come. Yeah. The last word we hear Jesus speak in this passage of scripture leading up to verse 32 is in verse 31. He says to Peter, O thou of little faith, wherefore did thou doubt? Now there's a total of four times that Jesus speaks throughout this passage. The first two times he speaks to the disciples and the last time he speaks again to, or the last two times he speaks only to one disciple and that's Peter. Now when Jesus speaks, he gives a command. He constrains that word constrain is important. Yeah, because yeah. what he's doing, he's compelling the disciples. That's right. That's right. Or he's literally forcing them, saying, look, this is what you're going to do. Right. This is not up for negotiation. That's right. I don't need your input. Right. I don't need you to tell me what you think is best. Yeah. This is what you're going to do. Right. And this is where I'm going to meet you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Get into a boat. Meet me on the other side. Yeah. This is, this, again, they, they, didn't, they didn't discuss it. There was no back and forth. What we see next is that they're doing exactly what Jesus commanded them to do. Yeah. We like that a lot of times. Because initially when God speaks, we're just happy that he's speaking. Right. We're happy that he's talking to us. Because right. yeah. we've been praying, we've been seeking him, yeah. and God has finally given an answer to our prayer. He's yeah. finally reaching out and touching us and saying the very thing that we've wanted him to do. So we're excited. So we're, we're eager to run off and do the very thing that he All said right. do. Yeah. Right, which is what the disciples did. But here, let me go a little bit for, further. As he constrained the disciples to get into the ship and meet him on the other side, they all started out following his word, but then something happens that makes them afraid. As I just stated, they see Jesus in a way that they had never seen him before. They see him walking on water, and this can obviously be scary if you can imagine. Yeah. If you've seen anybody today walking on water, it would Brother, you would kind of wonder, what is this? Right. Because, again, it's something that we've never seen before. Right. Right. Now, what is important here is to notice Jesus' word. Mm -hmm. As I said before, three things. The word, say that, the word. The, the, word. Word. the water or the way. And the wind. the wind. So I call my first witness to the stand. We're talking about the word. Mm -hmm. What did Jesus say? Anytime we're walking through life, especially in this faith walk, we have to always revert back to the beginning. What did he say? Because along the way, some things can happen. And it can cause us to be a little bit fearful. We see it in the, in the scriptures. It can cause us to start to doubt his word. So we always have to remember. That's why it's important to write it down. If we need to record it, take a picture, whatever we need to do. What did he say in the beginning? Because what he said his word, he's going to accomplish his word. He's going to always, his word cannot, will not return to him void. But it has to accomplish that which he sent it to do. So we always can de depend on and rely upon his word. Yeah. So what did Jesus say? His word is now taking the stand. The only reason that Jesus stopped in the middle of the sea was because they were afraid. This is important. Because his word didn't say, I'm going to meet y'all in the middle of the sea. He said, meet me on the other side. So many times we get afraid. And God is God enough to stop whatever he's doing. Plenty of times he'll stop whatever he's doing to tend to our fear. And say, listen, I know this is new. I know you haven't seen me like this before. I know you haven't been here. But it's me. It, well, I said, I told you what to do. It's me. So just, just up a little bit further. You're, you're almost there. You're almost there. Don't turn around. Don't get fearful now. Don't get up now. We're, we're, you're too close. Don't be afraid. It's, it's me. It's a little bit further. He didn't, he, wasn't, he didn't even deal with the fact that I'm walking on water. He just knew, hey, look, it's me. He, he really didn't have a chance to because Peter popped up. 
he had something to say before he could say anything else. But let, let me move a little bit further. I want to get through everything, and I don't want to take up too much more of your time. He speaks to the disciples a second time, and he tells them not to be afraid of his words. Again, they should have reaffirmed their faith. God comes to you a second time. He's already told you what to do once. He comes back again. That should strengthen your faith, right? Like, okay, all right. I was a little worried, but thanks. <laughs> you you back. I, you, I wasn't sure, but you you, you that should have that that would at least reaffirm my fear, right? Right. right, right. I was like, okay, what I thought it was is not what I thought it was. I'm good now. Right. At least for a little bit longer. Right. To the next thing that comes up, and you need him to come back again. That's what should have happened. However, However. his word should have. But instead, it prompted Peter to require a son. Jesus' words was not enough for him to believe. So the problem with calling what happens next, an act of faith, is seeing is not faith. If believing, it is believing in the Bible, or as the book of Hebrews states, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. If you can see it, then you don't need to have faith for it. Peter heard the word, but he still needed to see in order to believe. How many times have we walked in the same shoes as Peter? Now, we're, now the reason why faith is on trial is because we're, we're giving Peter accolades when he was walking in fear. We got, we, and we do it so many times. We step out of the ship. We step out of the boat. We step out of what God says and we do what we think is better because it's not working fast enough. Because it don't look like what we thought it should look like. And then we have some success. But shortly after, we start to sink. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me back up. If you can see it, you don't need to have faith for it. Peter heard the word, but he still needed to see in order to believe. That's not faith at all. But it is doubt that was birthed out of his fear. It is here where the instruction shifted from Jesus speaking to all of the disciples. Now, he's just dealing with Peter. Peter first makes a request to Jesus. He says, Lord, if it be thou, bid me to come out onto the water. Jesus tells Peter to come. Now, that word come is significant here because we are examining the word. The word is on the witness saying. So what did Jesus say? In this passage, even though Jesus spoke the word come to Peter, that word didn't start with Jesus. Come on now. Remember what I said a few minutes ago? Uh -huh. We have to go back to the beginning. What did Jesus say? Right. Come didn't start with Jesus. Yeah. Jesus said go. He didn't say come. Yeah. Jesus said go. He yeah. didn't say come. Oh, Jesus said go. Yeah. He didn't say come. So where did come, even though Jesus spoke it, where did come come from? When we do like Peter in this situation, what looks like faith, we decide to step out of the boat, step away from the crowd, and ultimately become false evidence appearing real. It's an acronym for fear. Uh -oh. well, we step out of safety. We step out of the boat, and we step into what we think we should have, or what we think we should do, or what, what works best for us. Just because we can see it. But if we can see it, then it's not faith. Come didn't start with Jesus. Come started as a request from Peter. Because Peter said, if it be thou, bid me to come. Jesus said, well, it's me. Come on. And in other words, if I, if I, if I could interpret what Jesus was saying, it was like, that's what you want to do. <laughs> How many times has God... You maybe didn't hear him say that, but when you got in the middle of doing what you wanted to do, you could hear God saying, well, that's what you wanted to do. Because, because ultimately, you turn back to God and you say, God, why did you let me do this? And God's like, I didn't let you do nothing. That's what you wanted to do. If Can you remember what I told you? If you go back to what I told you, this was never a part of the plan. You added this to the plan, and because you added it to the plan, you ended up with the results of the plan that you created. 
Now, if you walk through the plan that I created, you'll get the results that I desire and desire for you to have. When you come up with a plan, it's your plan, and you don't get what you plan. And it may not look like anything that I have planned at all. So what's important is our words. It's not that we can't have words, but our words need to line up with his words. See, we have words in the beginning. God created. But after God created, when he created man, man began to create. Everything that he brought to Adam, Adam named it. And God agreed. That means they were in agreement. That means we can have agreement with God. That means there are some things that we can declare, that we can say, that we can profess in the world, and God will do it, and he will agree with it if it's in line with his word. But when we start saying things that he didn't say, that he doesn't desire, that he doesn't want for our life, then we end up with the very thing that we spoke instead of what he spoke. We spoke, he spoke. We spoke, he spoke. His, his word is even higher than him. He humbles himself under his word to perform. But he has not humble himself under your word unless it's in line with his word. Let me go on. I, I, don't, I don't want to keep the word up here too long because we got a couple more witnesses. As I said, the word come, it started with Peter. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, yes. What we don't realize, and I just said, the power, the creative power that we have and the commanding power we have with our own words. We say stuff so much and it's idle, but the Bible declares that we're going to have to account for every word that comes out of our mouth. It says, study to be quiet. That's right. It's a reason why it says that. So because yeah. we talk too much. Yeah. And we don't realize that what we say mm. has power. Yeah. We right. think the preacher the only one with the power. We think unless we hear God audibly speak, that's the only power. 